watching Tallahassee's News Channel 27. Here comes Sauter into the Nashville zone, takes it in deep and behind the net, lays it in the right wing corner for Geldart. Time remaining on the power play, 30 seconds. Geldart gives the puck to Pasco in behind the goal. Brian Brown ties up Pasco. Alvin in there also. Now Geldart helps out for the Tiger Sharks, takes the puck. Alvin hits him, but Geldart keeps coming. Knocks it free to Pasco. Out to out off right point to Pasco. Open right wing circle, skating in, shooting, save Brown. Rebound comes back to Pasco, and he tried to get it to Aldoff, but passed it a little bit too hard. The puck comes down deep into the Tiger Shark zone. Four seconds left on the Tiger Shark's fifth power play opportunity. 6.54 to go here in the period. Tiger Sharks get it to Savchenkov now to Galdard at center into the Nashville zone. Drop pass to the left wing side. Savchenkov takes it there, throws it in behind the net. Galdard after it in a battle with Ryan Brown in behind the goal. Now Pasco in. He and Quentinville hammering away at one another in the right wing corner. Savchenkov takes the puck in behind the net. Skates to the near wing. Savchenkov knocked down, gets the puck though to Galdard. Centers there. Pasco, he scores! Get the hat, though! Good throw for Pasco. Ron Pasco will win on the hat tonight. And here they come onto the ice surface here at the Civic Center. These fans know what's going on in this sport. Second Tiger Shark hat trick of the year belongs to Ron Pasco. Jimmy, you got a hat for me? I want to throw one out there. Tallahassee Tiger Shark goal scored. It's a hat well, trick for the number seven. I'm going to grab the one the guy in front of me and he can throw one out. Good for him. If any guy deserved it, it's Ronnie Pasco. He's taking a beating out there. What a great goal, a great pass from Greg Gellhart. And the Tiger Sharks lead 3-2. Final goal, 13-32. Good morning and welcome to the Tiger Shark Report here on Channel 27. I'm Jim Mirobello. We've got highlights of some big Tiger Shark wins this week over Nashville and Mobile. Coach Terry Christensen will join me in a moment. Right now, let's check in with David Murray. Tuesday night at the Leon County Civic Center, the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks entertained their arch rivals of the South Division in the Birmingham Bulls. This marks the seventh meeting between these two clubs this year. Tallahassee leading the series 5-0-1. This game was originally scheduled for February 4th, but had to be postponed because of icy road conditions coming out of Birmingham. Early in the week, the Bulls made a trade with South Carolina, sending forward Rob Donovan to Charleston in exchange for Stingray defenseman Chad Siebel. Later in the week, the Tiger Sharks will see Rob Donovan in a South Carolina uniform when the Stingrays visit the Leon County Civic Center on Friday and Saturday. Meanwhile, the Tiger Sharks did some swapping of their own before Monday's trade deadline sending forward Alexander Sevchinkov to the Johnstown Chiefs in exchange for the ECHL's all-time leading scorer in Trevor Job. As expected, the East Coast Hockey League Board of Governors Thursday granted an expansion team to the city of Biloxi, Mississippi. The franchise will be owned by the same group that owns the Roanoke Express. ECHL rules allow an investor group to own more than one franchise in the league, but player movement between the two teams is prohibited. Talk of expansion for Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Pensacola, Florida is on hold for now, but that's because both cities are in the running for relocation sites of current ECHL teams. There are strong indications that the Erie Panthers will leave Pennsylvania at the end of the season and move to Baton Rouge. As for Pensacola, their situation a little more complicated. If the National Hockey League expands into Atlanta, that would force the current Atlanta Knights to relocate, probably Nashville, and play in the new $120 million arena currently under construction in Music City, USA. As for the Nashville Knights, well, they would have to find a new home. And the city most interested? Pensacola, Florida. I'm David Murray. Now let's check in with Don Kelly. Thank you, David. Well, it's no secret that the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks have the hottest ticket in town. With tomorrow being the last day for trade deadlines, each team should have their finest product on the ice from now right through playoffs. What does this mean for the Tiger Sharks? I'll have that story and more later in the show. Jim? Thank you, Don. Now it's time for our Celebrity Ham's Rule of the Game. Here's my Mellow 105 broadcast partner, Tom Nezzle. Welcome to this week's Celebrity Ham's Rule of the Game. This week, we're going to talk about forechecking. And really, forechecking isn't a way you hit a person. It's an actual system that the Tiger Sharks and all the hockey teams use to try to generate some offense. And really, it is an interesting system, and hopefully today will be beneficial to you. First of all, we have to look at the keys. The first key is you need to close the gap quickly. And that's very similar to basketball. 
Whenever you're checking a man or you're guarding a man, you can't leave that gap between you and the other player. You have to be very close to them. Secondly, you need to work hard, but also as you work hard, you have to be very smart. In the 2-1-2 floor check, you need to work extremely hard, but if you work too hard and you're not smart, you won't be successful, so you have to have a good combination there. Next, you need to hit, and this one's a big, big point. You don't want to curl away from an opportunity to plant a guy into the board, so watch for that. Next, the third man high, and that's usually one of the forwards. With the three forwards, the final guy, or the third man, he needs to remain high as a defensive valve. And finally, you need to communicate. Believe it or not, on the ice, these guys are talking constantly all the time and telling each other where to go or if they have their man. So you can really hear them talking when you get close to ice level. Now let's look at the types of floor checks. The first one is called the 1-2-2 passive floor check. And really, the name of it describes what happens. Let me show you what happens here. The first floor checker goes on the puck carrier, and usually it's the centerman or winger. Let's say for this sake, it's the centerman. So you have one player. Now the next two forwards into the zone will be the two wingers. Now they will set up, close the gap on these wingers here. So we have two. Then finally, the two defensemen come into the zone. There are defensive valve. There's the other two. That's how you get the name, the one, two, two. Really? There's not many options to break out with for the breakout team. Really, the only one is for this centerman here, the X guy. These guys are locked on. This centerman has made a hit. So really, it's one guy coming up the ice against the two defensemen. That's a very good defensive situation if you're a coach. You'll be happy with that. Now, you're not going to generate very much offense of turning a puck over with this one, but defensively, you'll be intact. Now let's take a look at the other type of floor check that will generate offense. This one is called the 2-1-2 aggressive floor check. Now once again, same scenario as the last one. The first guy will come in, we'll say it's the centerman, and he's gonna lay a hit on this puck carry. He wants to eliminate him. Now the second player, which is a winger, he will come in and hopefully pick up a loose puck. So we have two. The third forward, who's going to remain high, he will locate himself right here. So we have one. And then, once again, the two defensemen. That's why it's called the 2-1-2. Two -two. Now, there's two types of scenarios that can happen here, and you'll have to watch with me closely. If this defenseman makes this pass, okay, and this is what we call the strong side, because everybody's on this side. So this is the strong side. It's this winger's responsibility to go over here and make this hit. And then this forward fills his position. However, if the puck were to go over to this corner where this defenseman might drop off, this winger who was initially there has to go make this hit. This defenseman fills in right there. A lot of times you'll see Matt Osiki, Rodrigo Levinch, they do that really well, they fill in. This other defenseman moves over. The winger here will go behind the net to help out if there is a loose puck. And then it's this other guy who made the initial hit, usually the centerman. It's his responsibility to get out high and become that third man high. We talked about the third man being high. You don't ever want to get caught where you have one, two, three guys below the net. You never want that to happen. So this guy, after he makes his hit and there is a pass, he needs to get out there very quickly. Now, this is a good area. A lot of times you'll see like Darren Schwartz or Mark Beasley, they'll find themselves open, and sometimes a guy like a Cal Ingerham or a Shane Henry can make a pass to them, and then they'll get a great scoring opportunity. It's a very aggressive type of floor check. It's very exciting for the fans and for the players, so the next time you're at the Tiger Shark game, make sure you look for the different types of floor checks, and that's this week's Celebrity Ham's Rule of the Game.
Celebrity Hams is more than spiral sliced ham. It's succulent, honey roasted, marinated rotisserie chicken. Celebrity Roasters are seasoned overnight in a unique blend of herbs and spices, slow roasted to perfection from chickens that are farm fresh, never frozen. Celebrity Hams and Roasters serves handmade chicken pot pies, chicken salad, lunch plates, and the original stuff and muffin, the healthy choice for lunch or dinner. Chicken used to be chicken, but not anymore. Taste the difference honey roasted, marinated rotisserie chickens make only at Celebrity Hams and Roasters. Walt, on behalf of the Universal Travel and Tours, I want to welcome you to Tallahassee. We had a great season last year. This year, we look forward to going all the way and getting the ring. Jim, thanks very much. It's great to be here in Tallahassee. That's our goal, to bring a championship cup back here to Tallahassee. As a professional franchise, we have a lot of unique travel needs, and we look to have those needs taken care of, along with my personal needs. We look to Universal Travel. You take great care of us, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. The Cash Cow. The name you need to remember. The Cash Cow. We have fast, easy money now. The Cash Cow. What is the Cash Cow? The Cash Cow is the largest title pawn company and check cashing service in the area. And for a limited time, 0% interest on title loans. Yes, interest-free loans when you bring in your car, boat, motorcycle, or RV title. Need your checks cash? The Cash Cow is the only stop you should make when you need your checks cash fast. Come see the Cash Cow at one of our five convenient locations. Now at the Tallahassee Flea Market. The Cash Cow. Joining me now, Tiger Sharks head coach Terry Christensen. A couple of big home wins, Terry, this past week. Mobile on Sunday night, Nashville Monday. Big weekend series with the Knights. Let's look back at the last two at home, and in particular, that Nashville game on Monday night, 5-4 win. Well, it was really a big game for our hockey team, Jim, uh, simply because it's our third game in three nights. I, I, you know, you have Nashville in town the night before watching us against the Mobile Mystics, and I really felt that uh, they were going to come out and really give it to us in the first period. Uh, usually when you catch a team on the road, and it's their third game in three nights, uh, that visiting team will come in and they'll try to apply as much pressure as they possibly can. But, you know, really proud of the job that the guys did in the locker room. They came out, they understood exactly what they were going to face against Nashville. They, in fact, they came out and they go up two to nothing. Nashville comes back, ties it up two to two, and uh, still our players didn't panic. They just, uh, you know, got on with business and did the job that they were asked to do. And uh, obviously, we prevailed in that game and very happy with the victory. Nothing like a good start. Ronnie Pasco, 16 seconds into the game, puts you on the board one nothing, and then Ron scores his first professional hat trick. Well, not only was it his uh, first professional hat trick, but it was a natural hat trick. And for the people at home watching this program today. Uh, a natural hat trick is when a player scores three consecutive goals for his hockey team. Now that's a rarity in any league at any level, Jim, and, and certainly we're very happy for Ron. He's the kind of player who works very hard each and every shift he's on the ice surface, doesn't always score, sometimes gets frustrated when he doesn't score, when he gets chances, but you know, throughout the course of a season, if you keep on working hard, you're going to cash in on some of your chances, and, and that's what Ronnie did in that particular game. Well, looking at what's coming up for the Tigers, Sharks on Tuesday night, Birmingham will be here. It's the makeup game of that one that was postponed about a week or so ago when Birmingham couldn't get out of Alabama. Then after that, South Carolina comes in, and I know they were big rivals with the Tigers, Sharks last year. Well, certainly. I, I think the, for two reasons it's a big week, week right now, Jim. You, you take a look at the number of home games we have left on our schedule compared to the road games. Uh, certainly all the home games now become critical for us as we, you know, as we march on to, toward the playoff uh, run. And, and uh, when you think about Birmingham, first and foremost, they've replaced their coach, Phil Roberto, with Dennis DeRoge. Dennis DeRoge is kind of like a John Brophy type coach. Uh, he's a little old school. Uh, certainly brings out a, a, a lot of uh, grit in his players, and I know that Birmingham will be coming in here trying to do everything they possibly can to get two points. For the fans at home, what happens at this point in the season, you take a look at the standings, you might see that we're up maybe 10, 12, 14 points ahead of a Birmingham, but yet they come in here and they play very hard. They've got something to play for right now. They're, they're trying to make the playoffs. They got, they're in a very close race with Mobile at this point in the season. So every game is critical for all teams in the East Coast Hockey League right now. So it, it doesn't matter if you're 12, 14 points ahead of somebody in the standings. I mean, when they come in here, they're playing for their lives. And so certainly we're going to have a very difficult game against Birmingham. When you talk about South Carolina, they've made a lot of changes in their lineup. We haven't seen them all year long, but certainly it'll be a, a great series against a good hockey team in South Carolina, coached by Rick Five. Well, we'll turn the microphone over to some Tiger Shark fans to ask their questions to Coach Terry Christensen on the Wendy's Ask the Coach. That's up next here on the Tiger Shark Report. Yeah, Spider-Man and 
Teamwork takes communication. I'm coming across the blue line. For two-way radios and pages, the name to remember is First Communications, your authorized Motorola dealer. Dix, run that forward. I got him. For over 25 years, we've been making workplaces more productive through improved communications. Now we're proud to be helping the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks to stay in touch. Stop the shot. Motorola and First Communications, a winning combination. Security, security, we need help on the ice. It's a brand new school year, and iSavers wants to make sure you're totally focused and in style. Announcing the four for $99 limited time offer. One, you'll get an eye exam by a professional doctor of optometry. Two, a pair of Bausch & Lomb or equivalent contact lenses. Three, the Renew Lens Care System. Four, a new pair of eyeglasses. So don't delay. Get in focus and in style with the four for $99 back-to-school special only from iSavers. North Monroe, Appalachian Parkway, Monticello, and Thomasville. time now for our Wendy's Ask the Coach, and Terry, here's your first question. Hey, Coach. My name's Chris Murren. I want to know why the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks recently traded Todd Reardon to the Jacksonville Lizard Kings for Jed Feeblecorn. Anytime a trade is made on a hockey team, especially uh, the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks, because the community gets so close to the players that are on the team, and also the players get very close to the community, uh, people want to know why. Uh, recently we made a trade Todd reared into the Jacksonville Lizard Kings for Jed Feeblecorn on our hockey club right now when the trade was made we had a total of eight defensemen on the hockey team and we felt it was necessary that we make a trade to bring a forward of size to our lineup getting Jed Feeblecorn into our lineup at this point in time uh, number one gives us another forward number two gives us size and strength uh, number three gives us an individual that can play all four three uh, all three forward positions, be it right wing, center ice, or left wing. So we felt it was necessary to do this. We didn't necessarily want to trade Todd Reardon, but in this particular situation, he's the only player that they would take. I think it's a good trade for the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks, and certainly a good trade for Todd Reardon. He's going to get a lot of ice time in Jacksonville, and he's got the potential to be called up to the Portland uh, franchise from there as well. So I think it's a trade that where both people will benefit. Hi, Coach. I'm Stephen Bryant. I was curious, what role did the New York Islanders and the rest of the NHL and IHL affiliates play as we progress towards the playoffs? To answer that question in terms of the New York Islanders, our, our, our affiliate, and how they will affect the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks as we progress toward the playoffs, number one, it'll, be, it'll depend on where do the New York Islanders fit into the Stanley Cup playoffs. As they progress through the remainder of their season, if they see themselves not making the Stanley Cup playoffs, what they'll do is they'll send players down to the Utah Grizzlies. When that happens, the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks could be the benefactors of that. Uh, simply because, you know, once, once their roster gets full in Utah, there'll be players that can be sent to Tallahassee. Same thing can be said for our affiliation with the Florida Panthers. If they send a number of players down to the Carolina Panthers in North Carolina, Greensboro, then, of course, we would stand a chance of getting a player or two from Carolina. However, in that particular situation, I just don't see it happening, of course, because of the success that the Florida Panthers are having this season. So uh, hopefully we'll get a player or two as we progress through the season, but if we don't, uh, we feel very comfortable with the club we have right now. present this to the man who's done so much for Big Eaters, Mr. Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's. Yay! Three years ago, I had a dream to make Wendy's Big Bacon Classic Cheeseburger to satisfy the biggest eater. With a quarter pound of fresh beef, cheese, bacon, not two strips, three strips, plus a pile of Biggie fries and a nice 20 ounce drink. And when I thought it was too big, I said, now it's perfect. Wendy's Big Bacon Classic Combo, the official meal of the Big Eaters Club. So let's eat! In Florida, bank holding companies are literally buying out their competition. Every transaction is processed by a machine. Phones are answered by computer-generated voices. Even loan decisions are faxed to their home offices in other cities for review. At Capital City Bank Group, the most important asset always has and always will be our people. You can still do business with someone you know.
Well, with the final roster being announced tomorrow and the playoffs right around the corner, the level of intensity between the teams steps up yet another notch. Not to mention that the Tiger Sharks are in a close race for that number one position. What does the sum of all this equal? The hottest ticket around. Sylvester with a bucket center. Ingraham backs it away from him. Ingraham's got a breakaway down left wing. Here he comes. He scores! What a great goal by Cal Ingraham. He stole the puck of the blue line. Turned on the speed. Came down left wing. And with a wrist shot beat Mark Michaud. Tallahassee is up by two. And if great hockey isn't enough, this weekend cast a string of blockbuster events, including the return of the now famous Mighty Mites on Friday the 23rd, and the groovy second annual 70s night on Saturday the 24th, with a special appearance by the village people. From here on out, folks, it only gets better. For the Tiger Shark Report, I'm Don Kelly. Thank you, Don. We'll have more on the Tiger Shark Report in just a moment. Who makes the world's greatest hamburger? World's greatest. Ruckers, you start with a freshly ground half-pound hamburger. Fresh. After that, it's in your hands. Yes. So, who makes the world's greatest hamburgers? Bud Ruckers. Bud Ruckers and you. Bud Ruckers. The puck stops here. Mission Trace Apartments, home to the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks. Mission Trace. Off the beaten path with spacious two and three bedroom apartments, yet it's conveniently located only minutes to all the universities, complete with amenities such as weight rooms, swimming pool, and a car wash area. Now accepting applications, so hurry to Mission Trace Apartments, 3801 Mission Trace Boulevard. Tonight, the Tiger Sharks are in action on the road. They'll be in Nashville. Our broadcast on Mellow 105, 104.9 FM starts at 5.50 this evening, 6 o'clock face-off Eastern time. Then next up for the Tiger Sharks is a home game Tuesday against Birmingham. It's not originally on your Tiger Sharks schedule. It's the rescheduled game from February 4th that had to be postponed when the Bulls could not get out of Alabama because of bad weather. So Tuesday night, next action at home, Tiger Sharks in Birmingham at 7 o'clock. Our thanks to Coach Terry Christensen, David Murray, Don Kelly, and our producer, Mark Swain. I'm Jim Mirabello. Until next week, so long, everyone. Here's Deasley down left wing. Deasley wrist shot save. Rebound in front score. Tiger Sharks up. Four to one. Derek Schwartz scores on the rebound. And let's get the count out. Schwartz, he's getting close to that 500. A first.
perfect rebound. Actually, the first shot was by Deasley. It went between the legs of Michelin. Hit the post and came out right to Darren. Well, it didn't hit the post, I apologize. But Darren was right there. Kitty by the door to put it into the empty net. That's two points tonight for Darren. He's now five away from the 500 mark. 10.33 to go, period number three. The best two of the bucket center. Ingraham bats it away from him. Ingraham's got a breakaway down left wing. Here he comes. He scores! What a great goal by Cal Ingraham. He stole the puck of the blue line. Turned on the speed. Came down left wing. And with a wrist shot feet, Mark Michaud. Tallahassee is up by two. Jimmy, great composure here by Cal. As he came in on the breakaway, he wanted Michaud to make the first move. As soon as he did, Cal went right upstairs and made no doubt about it. It's a two-goal lead for the Tiger Sharks. Now Derek Everly sends it along the far side, but it's kept in by Alziki, who puts it in front there. It's Pasco, he scores! Rob Pasco on the backhand from right in front, set up by Matt Alziki. 16 seconds into the game, and the Tiger Sharks lead it one to nothing. You couldn't ask for a better start right there, Ronnie Pasco. Pasco made sure about that one. It's one nothing, and those guys are fired up. This is a big game for them, and that's a great start. Tiger Shanks after the center. Pasco starts quickly into the Nashville zone, comes in on goal, takes his time, he scores! Ronnie Pasco with his second goal of the game, splitting the defense, blocking it on round, putting on a couple of moves, and sending in a shot up high, and it's 10 of the Tiger Shark. Well, the rocket, Ronnie Pasco, exemplifying his speed right there. He just flew by the Nashville defense. He put it upstairs and made no doubt about it right under the crossbar. Two goals for Pasco, two nothing Tiger Sharks. Subchenkov takes the puck in behind the net. Skates to the near wing. Subchenkov knocked down, gets the puck, go to Geldart, centers there, Pasco, he scores! Get the hats out! Third goal for Pasco, Ron Pasco will wear the hat tonight. And here they come onto the ice surface here at the Civic Center. These fans know what's going on in this sport. Second Tiger Shark hat trick of the year belongs to Ron Pasco. Jimmy, you got a hat for me? I want to throw one out there. Cal had it poked away by Engel, but Levitra covers. Beats Jeff Feeblecorn on right wing. Now to Ingraham skating into the slot. Ingraham in toward the goal. The back hitter, he scores! Cal Ingraham has tied the game at four. Maybe we better start calling this guy the magician. That was an unbelievable move by Cal Ingraham. He roasted the defenseman. And then he made a beautiful move on Craig Brown. And he's tied this at four. Well, third period, game tied at four. Ingraham wins the face off to Aaron Chris. Rich shot, score! Aaron Chris from the left point. It hit something on the way in. It changed directions on Brown. The Tiger Shacks have the lead, 5-4. Well, it took a little hop in front of Brown, kind of like in baseball when the ball double hops here for a second baseman or a shortstop. Because of that, it went in the net, and it's 5-4 to four for the Tiger Sharks. So make it hot. So higher, higher, get your hands to the ceiling. Let it go, y'all don't fight the feeling. Might get a stranglehold, sweat pouring. And like Jordan, yo, I'm scoring. Yeah, that's right, y'all, and I am in the flow. So pump up the volume along with the tempo. Many have died trying to stop my show. Well, Jim, you screwed that one up. You think you can do this one over for us? Well, coming up next, we're going to give you a chance to meet Alexander Sevchenkov, and you're not even going to meet him because he ain't even going to be here. So. <laughs> Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, this is yeah, bad news, George. We're screwing this one up, George.